Caracas, Venezuela. It's a South American city of more than three million. Oh, yeah. The noise and rush never stop. A self-appointed government. Well, they just want it all. They only want to score these little goals. Yes, they do. And now we're coming from Venezuela. Do you even know where that is? Because I got the itchy, itchy, yeah, yeah. Venezuela. Venezuela. In Caracas, there is also music. They call it the Venezuelan music miracle. Every day, more than 350,000 children get free music lessons through the National Network of Youth and Children Orchestras of Venezuela. The program is known as El Sistema, or the system. Most of these kids are from poor families. For these kids, Sistema is a second family, a place to feel accepted and appreciated. El sistema, ¿qué puede ser el sistema? El sistema es como una casa, pues. Es el sitio donde uno viene, es como otra familia. Sistema is for everyone. No child is turned away. Venezuela has more than 60 children's orchestras and almost 200 youth orchestras. It doesn't matter if their families can't afford music lessons. Here, music doesn't come with a fee. As a result of El Sistema, Venezuela produces more young classical musicians than anywhere else in the world. Me van a dar una beca para estudiar porque no podía estudiar porque no podía pagar mi liceo. Estoy en mi casa porque yo tengo seis hermanos, entonces cada vez que mi mamá sale yo me quedo cuidando. Cuando no estoy haciendo nada me quedo cuidando. The first movement in the Symphony of Sistema happened in 1975 at a rehearsal in a garage. A man named Maestro Jose Antonio Abreu began to build his musical utopia. His utopia makes a sound so big it's heard around the world. This beckoned a group of Canadians to come and unlock the secrets behind the magic. The Venezuelan music revolution got the attention of New Brunswick Youth Orchestra President Ken McLeod. It was time for he and his board of directors to visit Caracas to see what the big noise was all about. Well, I first learned about Sistema when I was searching the internet for a guest conductor for the youth orchestra and uh, was instantly captivated by the idea of social change through music. And uh, I began to talk with people in the community, government leaders, business leaders, uh, community leaders, and they all were interested in the idea. So the next step was, could we visit Venezuela and see it firsthand? So after many, many phone calls, they finally said, okay, you come. And uh, so here we are, we're on our way to see the Venezuelan music miracle. The Canadians immersed themselves in the fast-paced culture of Caracas, learning firsthand about the struggles and the strengths of this place. Their goal, to learn the secrets behind the music miracle of Sistema. Our team from the New Brunswick Youth Orchestra is here in Venezuela to observe El Sistema, to have a first-hand experience of how the program operates. And, uh, and, and through our learning, we hope to understand what can fit and work and uh, enable us to adopt a similar program in New Brunswick.
I think our minds are about to be blown away by what we observe here. Uh, and so, you know, where we'll end up, I'm not sure. This is a story that will progress over time. There are more than 200 Sistema Orchestra Centers, or Nucleos, in Venezuela. The Canadians will visit five. It's phenomenal to us. I, I really don't think we have any idea of what we will see and observe on this trip. This is just our first introduction, and uh, there's children crammed in every corner and location. I would say the density of it is, is the most overwhelming thing that we saw as we just walked in, the amount of wall-to-wall -wall people that, that are in this building. There's an awful lot of young people here starting at age three, they explained to us, until age 21. And uh, some are here for an hour a day, uh, a number of times a week, others are here for a much longer duration. We're trying to teach them how to how to look to the world in a different way through music. And I think that that helped them to enjoy their childhood a little bit more. Part of the brilliance of El Sistema is that many students are also teachers. This creates a continual learning and teaching environment for all of the El Sistema musicians. The orchestras themselves are being conducted by alumni of El Sistema. One of the uh, women who is a conductor herself is still a student in the system and has been a teacher for two years. So her young students in the orchestra are seeing their conductor who's still a student but who's also a teacher, and so is progressing and has opportunity. So they are living examples uh, to, their, to, to the young people of the fact that you can learn and grow and have opportunity in your life. Antonio Delgado, one of the El Sistema alumni from Venezuela, helped the Canadian visitors, teaching them the secrets behind Sistema's success. It's incredible because the system not just produce musicians, produce professionals in, in, in other fields, you know. And there is something that changes you, that, that you start to love, you know, what you are doing here in your country, in a, in a country that is in a third world, but even here you, you know that you can do very, uh, very good things and excellent things. You can be an excellent professional, not just in music, in, in, in everything that, that you want to do. Um, and of course, you know, uh, there is a spiritual um, side of all that. You know, it, it becomes more conscious of what you are doing here uh, in, in some way. The visitors from the New Brunswick Youth Orchestra Board watched and listened. They felt the rhythms of El Sistema, got to know the young musicians, and found a symphony of inspiration. Well, what we're seeing here is a program that is dealing with all the aspects of, of building uh, young people's lives so that they have an inspiration and an ability to work with one another in a very positive fashion. Not only are they, uh, you know, producing musicians, but they're producing uh, young folks that are able to communicate with, uh, with their colleagues, work in, in harmony with them, and work towards something that, that is uh, very productive and, and, and very useful in life. The music miracle began in a developing country with few resources, and now it's so big it's spreading far beyond the barrios of Venezuela. There are Sistema-based programs around the world. Sterling Scotland's program has been transforming its community with big success, proving that any community in any country can join the Sistema revolution. The Raplock, 
a community on the outskirts of Stirling, is infamous for high unemployment and poverty. But now, it's known for something else, classical music. It's not just people who are in the orchestra whose families are, uh, are enthusiastic about it. Uh, everyone here loves to see the kids get on and achieve things. Sistema Scotland started in the summer of 2008. The children's orchestra, based here on Drip Road, is called Big Noise. Sistema Scotland gives kids hope and inspiration through the power of music. Eight out of 10 eligible children in this place are playing music with us. That has a huge impact. And we're working with about getting on for 300 kids a week. So it's quite a big impact here. It's, uh, it's something that everybody knows about. Everyone knows someone in the orchestra. So it's had a big, big splash here. I, I always liken it to be uh, like, a, like a, a culture grenade landing in the middle of a, a community in a positive sense. Sistema Scotland is on a mission to transform lives through music. Here, like in Venezuela, the music fosters confidence, teamwork, and pride. Regardless of how actually wealthy people are, if they feel themselves to be excluded in their own kind of society, there are problems that come out of that, and an orchestra like this can address that. So even though we would have people from Venezuela where people actually do live in shanty towns, they come here and they might look around and think, well, these people look like millionaires compared to us in Caracas. The fact is that every society has these, these hierarchies, and all you need to do is to feel not part of the mainstream in your own country to, for, there, for there to be issues surrounding that. So we're, we're, we're here to make people feel proud about their achievements and be ambitious about what their kids can do. I'm Vincent Connolly. I'm staying in the Ratlock Stirling. I've got eight kids. Two of my boys are at the big noise I know. Vincent plays the double bass. My daughter, she will be learning the clarinet, and then next year, Brad will be starting the P1s in the big noise. So that'll be four kids in the big noise. Rablock's always had a bad reputation, but it's picking up in that now. It's getting a lot better, folks seem to be, and the, the big noise has brought a lot of folk a lot closer on that. I used to walk past the Rablock primary, and I didn't know no one. But now they're so close together, you say hello to folk and that, folks say hello to you, you're not sure who they are and that. It's just it's bringing a lot of folk a lot closer. Some of the kids are getting put into different orchestras. Um, it's just basically, they're moving up a level, basically. Congratulations, William McVeigh, on your brilliant tier in the Red Orchestra. And now you're a member of the Rincomda Orchestra. I love that. The big noise in Scotland proves that the music miracle from the south can be just as transformational in the north. The board of New Brunswick Youth Orchestra were amazed at the brilliance of the El Sistema musicians. Could New Brunswick children evolve to this? We are uh, from the, the New Brunswick Youth Orchestra, which is in the province of New Brunswick on the east coast of Canada, on the Atlantic Ocean. We've been inspired by the story of El Sistema, and we are inspired by you and your talent and your hard work, and we're here to learn from you to see if we can do something similar back in our province and country. After witnessing hundreds of kids being transformed and realizing that other countries such as Australia, United States, and Scotland had joined the revolution, the Canadians were inspired to act. Once the Sistema flame is lit, it's impossible to extinguish. Great art 
food is for everybody. Mm -hmm. So these kids are from, you know, unspeakable poverty, and they're performing beautiful music. At a so, very high level. That's right. So, yeah, so, yeah, so great so. art is for everybody. So it's a matter of opportunity. And I, I think uh, the program could start right away. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it be just kind of interesting if we said, right now, we're going to start in September, this September, not the following September. Yeah. Can, we, can we start in September? What, I mean, what's the feeling behind that? What would it take to do that? It was a radical plan. September was only three months away. But could it work? And would someone like Antonio Delgado be willing to help? What would it mean to us to be able to have someone with direct personal experience mm -hmm. from Venezuela mm -hmm. come and lead the implementation mm -hmm. of this program in our province and in Canada? Wouldn't that propel us ahead? The board members asked Tony Delgado if he would move to Canada to initiate the first Canadian nucleus. He was honored by the invitation to the Great White North, but he had commitments here, so he couldn't leave yet. The Canadians would have to find another way to bring El Sistema to Canadian kids. You know, what we were learning throughout this whole experience in Venezuela is there, there's, there, there's life change that occurs with each of the individuals that's involved. And, uh, and so it's transforming their life, and that ends up being transferred to their family and to the community in general. So I can now better understand this idea of transformational change that's happening in the society in Venezuela. You can see it with the person, and then you can see it in the eyes of the family members. There are issues of, of, of poverty, very extreme conditions of poverty, and, and serious issues of safety. Uh, and in this environment, these young people are, are growing and learning. There's a tremendous sense of hope and opportunity for the future. And uh, so I think of home in New Brunswick. You know, we know there are more than 25,000 children living below the poverty line, and a good many other children who are in homes with lower incomes, who don't have opportunities. And uh, I think the tragedy of that is there's a sense of isolation that, that, can become, that can be overcome as children are able to learn and grow, gain confidence, self-esteem, and uh, they, they begin to see there are opportunities that they can grab a hold of. It was June 2009, and the board members resolved to start Sistema New Brunswick in less than three months. The question was, could they take a Made in Venezuela music miracle and make it happen in one corner of Canada? The team from the New Brunswick Youth Orchestra Board left Caracas full of inspiration. They were determined to start a Sistema Canada within a three-month window. You know, of course, it's been more than an 18-month process uh, from, you know, research, phone conversations, meetings, uh, of course, the visit to Venezuela, and then even on returning mid-June, we're looking to start a program for the first time ever in New Brunswick and Canada uh, in September. The great and exciting thing that we notice coming back is everybody gets it immediately. People are, are galvanized around the vision of El Sistema, social change through music. You know, kids whose lives are changed are different, uh, who have a chance, who gain hope, a sense of opportunity. You know, we have a lot to do yet. We have to find staff. We've got to recruit volunteers, because we need a big team of volunteers to operate every day after school. So we've got to have furniture. We have to purchase instruments. You've, we've got to think of all those things, because they're, uh, they're elements of a successful program. Sistema New Brunswick needed a teacher, someone talented and tireless enough to take on something monumental. We're going to take kids and change their lives through music right away. Sistema New Brunswick is an after-school program. It's every day after school, so it's Monday. Not Tuesday, everyone was convinced Wednesday, Sistema New Brunswick would fly. Some thought kids wouldn't come out five days a week to play music. But in the end, there were more than 200 applications for around 50 spots. Names were drawn from a hat. I know when uh, they got picked at school, uh, the rest of the mothers stopped talking to me for a while in the playground because they're, uh, 
it was a big competition about whose kid was going to get in and I sat back and just watched and when all the kids came out and they had the thin letters saying that they weren't and Derek came out with this big envelope just bouncing everybody was just looking at me and you know they still it was it's you know the schoolyard can be rough for parents too it wasn't a fairy tale beginning Sistema started with more than a little discord the first week was really horrible. I think for both the students and for myself and my helpers at the time, I didn't know what to expect. The kids didn't know what to expect. So there was no sort of ground for what we... Anyway, I thought they'd be kind of sound of music children and follow and be quiet, and they, they certainly weren't. And I think the first week was the biggest learning curve, and after that, it got a lot better. At first, the kids didn't have instruments. So Sarah had to make violins, violas, and cellos out of paper. So we have here the paper instrument. Um, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears in these things. They started five and a half weeks ago, almost well, the second day of Sistema. They really needed to know what, first of all, what they look like, the instruments themselves. Then they need to know how fragile they are. And just to gain a respect right away for the instrument itself. They sang and learned about rhythm they were measured for their real instruments that would be given to them at a special ceremony. Finally, thanks to intense public fundraising efforts, the violins, violas, cellos, and basses arrived. The kids got to touch strings and fingerboards for the first time. Tonight, we, for the very first time, the kids will have applause, They'll, you know, for their progress and their hard work in the first six weeks of the program. It's a great thing about that is parents will see and hear other parents clapping for their child. And it's really, really an important part of building their confidence and self-esteem and uh, helping us to go to the next step. Today, these children will receive their instruments, but I'd like to suggest that they're much more than that. We see them as instruments of joy, instruments of hope, and instruments of change. And we're just absolutely thrilled and delighted to, to be doing this tonight for each one of them. This is where it starts though. This is where it really begins. Um, whatever happened in the past, that was all good, but this is what Sistema is about now with the instruments. Sistema New Brunswick is in its sixth month, but the official opening is today. It's a big event. Even the Premier of New Brunswick and the media are here. The kids are ready to shine. Today we're at the official opening of the Sistema Center, and it's, uh, it's February, and uh, we had a huge crowd of people in the room. It's, it's actually very satisfying. What an exciting thing to see these children, uh, 45 of them, uh, play in rhythm and in tune on their instruments that they've only had in their hands for five weeks. Don't do this at all. Not only is this day the official opening of Sistema, it's also the day that the provincial government joins the cause and commits resources to the tune of $120,000. Not a bad start for something that was just an idea nine months ago. Things that we saw in Venezuela, we're now seeing in our own Sistema Orchestra right here. So we're seeing mentorship. You know, this idea that they can only be great if they're great together. That's happening right now after only a few months. So we've got the kids that are progressing more quickly with their instruments, turning and helping their seatmates. So this idea of respect and cooperation and teamwork, uh, we're seeing it. Uh, we're seeing it every day. It was time for the Sistema kids to show what they could do. They'd had their instruments for only five weeks, but were more than confident to teach some government officials a few chops. It's hard to imagine they've had those instruments only five weeks. I can't believe how quickly they picked up an appreciation for music and how quickly their their ears uh, became attuned to to the musical chords. You know, yeah. it's, uh, it's it's not easy, is it? It's, <laughs> it's baptism by fire. <laughs> It's two o'clock in the afternoon, and a busload of kids has arrived at the Lord Beaverbrook School in Moncton. They come here every day after school to make music. Okay, I think he gets what are you guys doing here? Oh, it's the Sistema? 
Really? What do you, what, what's the stomach? What is that? It's, uh, it's, it's something that's fun. fun. <laughs> it's an What do you do? What do you, you do? Play do? Sistema New Brunswick is new and raw. It's not fine-tuned yet, but it's real. When I heard that, that we could join something to learn how to play an instrument, I was like, oh my god, I gotta join it. So I was really excited. When when I'm when I get older, what I wanna do is uh, just um, start playing the bass guitar and join like a rock band. Veronica Donovan Ross has music in her eight-year-old soul and her family tree. Veronica's grandfather used to own a music store in Moncton. Her father, Dan Ross, was a professional singer and guitarist. There's pictures of your Papa Ross. There's me, my first electric guitar. Right there. That looks like me, except a boy. Right. And this one here is, you know, how uh, your Papa Ross has his music store. Right? That's his first store that he opened up. That here. wasn't it called Music Land? Yes, but this was before Music Land. This was, it was called the Hawaiian School of Music. Twinkle, twinkle. Monica was one of the first kids to join Sistema New Brunswick. Well, they came to my school to tell all the kids about it, and they sent all sorts of notices home without stopping, and they had to draw names, and I was lucky enough to get in it, and I was really nervous because my best friend Erica, I wasn't sure if she got in it, but luckily she did, and we were on the phone for about an hour and a half talking about it. When Veronica was about five years old, I tried to get her into, into some guitar work, the same way that my dad did with me. And uh, I kind of hit a brick wall with it. And lo and behold, Sistema rolls around. And she's interested in it. And she goes to it. And all of a sudden, the music just explodes out of her, really. You know, if it wasn't for Sistema, I don't think that the music really would have awakened at her at an early age. Veronica is lucky. Right, so Besides Sistema, she takes private guitar and voice lessons too. But for some kids, Sistema is their only chance at music lessons. Derek is in grade two and lives in Moncton. Thanks to his new violin, he feels like a superstar. I practice in my room. I practice sometimes outside. I play concerts for people on the sidewalk. When I grow up, I want to be a famous new musician. Derek used to hate school. He couldn't remember the alphabet. He threw fits so he could stay home. He was lost. Music changed all that. I imagined him with a violin in his, uh, for a long time. Because, I mean, he's asked about different instruments and stuff, and thinks, like, you know, the double bass looks cool and stuff. But he's like, no, I, I like my violin, and I think that's where I'll stay. Um, I can see him, he wants to be a musician. You know, it changes day to day. Sometimes he wants to be a ninja too, <laughs> but uh, he wants to, you know, he has a lot of dreams and passion. And I mean, to see a child who was pretty much sitting there looking like he was lost for years, come into this fire has been just lit underneath of him and his passion's just crazy for it now. <laughs> You don't hear Belarusian spoken in Moncton very often. Olga Horolskaya, 
Her husband and her daughter Maria emigrated from Belarus a few years ago and settled in Canada. We decided because of uh, Chernobyl and we think uh, it's much safer to live out of Belarus because of uh, uh, consequences of uh, this uh, disaster. I hope uh, she will become a musician because uh, I was told uh, she is uh, doing awesome in music. She has a talent, so it's good profession for a girl to be a musician. <laughs> to learn music, it's very expensive. Like uh, I was told, it's about like seventeen dollars at least for half an hour. So you can imagine if a person working for $10 per hour uh, at labor work, and you cannot afford this. Just. I think this program is just awesome because I can see uh, how Masha growing up is just amazing. She changed a lot. She's more confident. She, uh, she's doing well in school and uh, well in sport. So I think it's, uh, it's because of uh, Music, because uh, music is a special development for the brain and it's special for children. Maria is a creative little girl, the type who can make a laptop computer out of paper and tape. You open it up and then you see this and then when it's done, it goes to this page and then you click your name. If you want to go to Firefox, you click on it. If you want to go to Internet Explorer, you click on it. The Kabylan has E A D G, and the viola has A D G C. Alelia is another budding musician from Sistema. She and her mom live in a basement apartment in Moncton. <laughs> Alelia loves the color pink, hula hoops, and Hannah Montana. Some of the most challenging parts about being a single mom would be not having that extra person to refer to or to put a lot of it sometimes on, and I have to do it all, to, all the time myself, both mom and dad. Um, but some of the challenging parts is there's a good bond. Like, we have a really strong bond that I think only single moms probably get because it's just us, and she knows I'm her one constant no matter what. So I think that's really important. Alelia is on summer vacation. And while she's having fun in the sun, she's also missing her violin at Sistema. She found out about Sistema when her school gave her information about it. They just handed me my she the sheet, and, my and I went home with it. My mother asked me if I wanted to go. I was like, yes, because I like music a lot. Maybe like if she's this good after one year, think about how good she'll be at the end of grade 12. You know, she could maybe do something with it that she would like for a career. Who knows what could happen? Sistema New Brunswick, like a piece of music, has its highs and its lows. So far, it's been moments of allegro. Some lamento was ahead. Two of the ones that moved away are my, my unsuccess stories, I guess, my heartbreaks. Like, just these two children that really could have been here, really could have benefited, and were benefiting from being here. Um, I got a day's notice and they were gone, and that was it. And that was a safe spot for them. And then, you know, the, you get, no, they say to you one day, I'm, I'm gonna leave, I'm moving, and they, and they go. <laughs> Sometimes, you can say the pain the kids face at home seeps into the classroom. I had an incident with a parent in, last week, and she, she stormed into the room and just and yelled at her daughter in front of everybody for, for several minutes and um, destroyed the, the security, the safeness of our, our zone. And that's not what it's about. I mean, we need that child here. That child needs to, needs to be here. To add to Sarah's darker challenges, the board of directors was met with a strong resistance to the Sistema program. I think that the perception uh, among some people 
with some association uh, uh, with the um, New Brunswick Senior Youth Orchestra uh, or traditional orchestra have had the perception that we have taken money from that orchestra and used it to fund Sistema. That's not accurate. That's simply not accurate. It's not factual. The regular or long-standing New Brunswick Youth Orchestra program uh, is fundamentally, by its very nature, a meritocracy. You get into the program, you are selected to be in the program based on your ability. And in that context, it's an elite program by its very nature. The vast, vast majority of people, myself included, could never hope to get into the regular New Brunswick Youth Orchestra that's been in existence for well over 40 years. The Sistema program is the exact opposite of that. It is precisely the opposite. This controversy is not unique to New Brunswick. Sistema programs around the world have met similar resistance. People don't always understand how music can change a community. A problem that Sistema probably throughout the world has an issue with is people who are involved and knowledgeable about music and music education tend to be the hardest people to convince. And so we do tend to have the major criticism we get, which is unfounded, it's from people who are saying, why are you getting all this attention? Because, you know, there's a kids' orchestra that's been doing all this great work for years. But yeah, they've been doing great musical work, but they've not been changing the lives of a community. They've not saturated a little community in culture the way that we have here. One of the surprise um, challenges we faced and continue to face right now is we got a substantial amount of pushback from people who had been um, involved in the what, what I'll call the regular New Brunswick Youth Orchestra program. Uh, you had those who were highly supportive, those who were neutral, and those who were outrightly negative. In New Brunswick, the complaints against the Sistema program became a heated debate for months. It ended up being the primary issue at the annual general meeting. I believe all of us gathered here today share in common a deep commitment to the advancement and well-being of the New Brunswick Youth Orchestra, and most importantly, to the young people who benefit from its programs. We won't always agree all the time, and we've had some differences in the past months that have been very difficult for all of us. There was a real chance that the current board of directors who created Sistema New Brunswick could be voted off the board, which would most likely be the demise of this life-changing program. There were two critical motions on the table, one being the re-election of the current board of directors, and the other to keep supporting the Sistema program under the New Brunswick Youth Orchestra umbrella. I would like to have a show of hands. All those in favor of resolution number one from the board, all those in favor, signify by raising their hands. All those against. The yeas uh, have it, and the resolution is passed. The motions that supported Sistema New Brunswick were passed, and by an overwhelming majority, the New Brunswick Youth Orchestra Board of Directors were voted to stay. Sistema New Brunswick's future was now solidified. June 2010. The kids have been coming here for months. Sistema is a way of life now. Strings and bows are like friends to the Sistema kids. They have bonded with their instruments, with their teacher Sarah, and with each other. But are the first faces of Sistema ready for their big concert debut? We're gonna be performing at the Capitol Theater and all our teachers and parents are gonna be there. We learned Hot Cross Buns, Twinkle Twinkle Star, March of the First Finger, and Amadeus Mozart, Twinkle. And we learned a lot. I can't even think of the rest. Time for the little stars of Sistema to head to Moncton's prestigious Capitol Theatre. Um, today is going to be fine. Uh, the kids are ready to go. Um, they've been ready for a couple of days now, so all we have, they're just really excited to play, and all they have to do is do what they do every day, I hope. 
<laughs> and they'll be fine. I think that last year at this time it wasn't, it was just a conception really and um, and now, now it's a year in and it's ours. It's not Venezuela's story anymore, it's our story. It's a big moment for the kids. Many of them have never seen the inside of the Capitol Theater. Today, a stage usually reserved for big name acts is theirs, all theirs. Look at all the people, it's huge. I'm really nervous. First, a few professionals get the chance to perform and a mother, Angela Mason, gets to tell her story. When my son brought Systema to my attention, I could never imagine what an impact it was gonna make on him. The program inspired a creative soul of my son, Derek, that I never imagined could ever exist with such passion and intensity. The program has changed his life for the better, giving him confidence and pride. He's made new friends and learned new skills that without the Systema program and the wonderful people working here, I could have never provided for him. But it's been an amazing year for us, and I can't wait to see what wonderful experience await us in the following years. Thank you. Finally, it's time. The little stars are about to shine. October to now is just amazing. These kids didn't have instruments in their hands in October, and here they are up on the stage of the Capitol Theater. I almost have tears in my eyes. <laughs> the emotion, I think, was 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 proud. It was it was happy, you know, that she was doing it, that she was getting the opportunity, an opportunity I wished I had. I've never played the Capitol Theater. Wow. <laughs> Actually, I'm so impressed that I, I, I speechless, and uh, I made the decision that uh, whatever happened in my life, uh, Masha, she should stay in music because uh, it's just great how personality changes in children, how great they are, and um, I, I just discovered for myself that <laughs> I missed a lot because I wasn't in such program. <laughs> Very emotional. Very. I know even when I was speaking, it was hard to actually say the words without crying because you're so proud of him. I mean, he's come so far in the last year. It's August 2010 now, and Sistema New Brunswick looks much different than it did a year ago. There's now a full staff of teachers, two full children's orchestras, and yet another significant financial commitment from the province gives me great pleasure to announce that the province of New Brunswick is investing $1.8 million towards the implementation of Sistema New Brunswick province-wide. When I look back, it was, it was a pretty, um, quite a mess when we first started. There was a lot of children and not many people knowing what was going on. But I think over the uh, course of several, several months and now a couple of years later, we have a pretty good idea of where we're going, and um, well, we're certainly touching a lot more children now, too. And the major coup? Maestro Antonio Delgado is here from Venezuela to teach. Not just for a day or a week, but for good. Antonio has decided to live in Canada and help Sistema New Brunswick grow in alignment with Maestro Abreu's vision. When Ken invited me to, go, to come to to New Brunswick, I wasn't prepared. It was two years ago. But now I've been living in New Brunswick for nine months, and it's incredible. I mean, how, how much we have done with the kids and with the youth orchestra, and how much they have progressed. Sistema New Brunswick has grown, and it has grown fast. 
The hard work of the New Brunswick Youth Orchestra has earned enough attention to hold an international Sistema Summit in Moncton, New Brunswick. A very special guest has joined the delegation. David Aschiano is a founding member of El Sistema in Caracas, and he is here to help share the Sistema Gospel. It's like a contagious happiness, a yes. contagious joy. You can listen. <laughs> and this is the great message of Beethoven. Yes. You see? Isn't, isn't it great we're listening to this music at this yes, moment, right? Yes, yes. Uh, oh, hymn to joy. Right? Exactly. Yes. Uh, we are all human beings, no yes. matter what they, we speak, yes. what is our uh, skin color, whatever. We have a soul, and we have to let this soul free. Be free. Yeah. A lot has happened over the last three years that's led to this point. And uh, of course, we're incredibly proud. But also at the same time, I can't help feel a bit agitated. There's, there's still so much to do. Just to get back to Sistema in September? Of course, that means getting back to school. We owe so much to Maestro Abreu. You know, Sistema is in New Brunswick and Canada because of him, and children have opportunity because of what he's done. Uh, he was supposed to be here, wasn't able to attend, and he sent me a personal letter, and it was very touching, very meaningful uh, personally, but also to our whole team here in New Brunswick. The Sistema Canada Summit attracted Sistema leaders and supporters from North and South America. They shared experiences and inspired each other to continue following the Venezuelan model to bring joy and spiritual wealth to the children of their communities. We all know that music can heal a broken heart. It can make a bad day better. We all need music and we all need Sistema. Venezuela has proven to us for 35 years that one way to get kids out of poverty, to get them to feel good about themselves, to, to feed their spirit, to uplift their dignity, is to put them in youth orchestra programs from a really young age and keep them there until they develop into, you know, supreme, you know, citizens and human beings. In the U.S. and I would say North America, the, our high arts have become so desiccated that in fact they have lost their reason for being. They've become a sport for the art club, which is 7% of a nation's population. And this is the healthiest infusion of new relevance and energy I have experienced in my lifetime. Bob Marley says, music is music. You want to play music, play music. They play all genres of music. I mean, maybe some of their entry points are Kanye West, and some of them are actually hearing a beautiful flute soloist. I mean, you just find the individual thing that triggers these kids' emotions to want to play an instrument. Give the training to young people. We put the power in their hands, but now we give communities a tangible reason to come to our concerts something that they can see and touch and feel, um, and to be able to say, look, they are really providing a service to this community other than great notes that come out of my bell. A Sistema for me has become like my second family. It is a place where I get there, I get to the center, and I really feel at home. The sense of community, friendship, and family is the glue that binds the Sistema revolution together. The love of music, children, and life is the fuel that powers it forward. Maestro Abreu's letter to Ken goes on to encourage him to continue pushing. It's only a matter of time before Sistema Canada will be as strong and powerful as Venezuela's El Sistema. It's a tremendous honor that a country as great and diverse as yours has set its eyes upon us and feels inspired by our work. We receive this distinction with deep emotion and humility. It has taken 36 years to build El Sistema in Venezuela to the point where it is today. The Sistema New Brunswick children are only in their second year, but they have gone a long way in that short period. The fruits of their labor are displayed at the Sistema Canada Summit closing.
Sistema is more than notes on a page, strings on a cello, or keys on a clarinet. It's about reminding society that music is not a luxury item. It's for everyone. It's about working against anything that degrades a child. And it's about encouraging children to embrace new goals and new dreams. In New Brunswick, the Canadian part of the revolution has begun.